Now, as we continue to consider representing spin with a mathematical model in a sense, there are several questions that naturally arise. The first one, quite clearly, um, actually, that may come to mind is the question of if we take some apparatus used to measure spin, say, say, stern curl like apparatus, and the one we have right here uh, measures it in the up and the down directions, right? And let's say we take it and we want to rotate it a little bit uh, by some degree, uh, let's say alpha, right? And with that given degree, how do we take the spin direction? Um, and how do we uh, essentially, uh, in accordance to the direction we're uh, measuring our spin, and how do we change the bases uh, that we want to represent it with? Right? And to clarify, let, let me just make sure um, that things are a little bit clear here. Um, if we are measuring spin up and down direction, the bases we're using is 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now, if we're measuring in the left and right directions, that basis again changes, and then for any degree in between, uh, say 45 degrees, um, say 60 degrees, anything along those lines, right, the basis that we're using will be slightly different. Now, the question that is, is there essentially um, is, is there a way to essentially take this process, this process of rotating it, and put it in such a way that, again, we can represent it mathematically? And the answer here would be yes. And to simplify that a little bit, let me uh, use uh, essentially an x and y axis that we have right here. Now, let's say this is our y axis and this is our x axis, right? If you've ever seen the Cartesian coordinate plane, you probably uh, know the names. And we're just using this to refer to direction in this case. We are not using as a representation of a Cartesian coordinate plane. That's important to keep in mind. Now when we have a vector of some sort, right? And let's say this is our initial standard a basis vector, right? Up and to the right. And keep in mind that our basis of vectors uh, are the vectors within our bases are set, right? Our orthonormal uh, vectors uh, that are orthogonal to one another are essentially also perpendicular to one another in a geometrical sense, right? And that just means they have a right angle to one another. It's quite straightforward. Now, with that in mind, let's also keep in mind that in accordance to the definition that we kind of provided, we know that the length of every vector, for regardless of what direction we're attempting, to measure it, we'll always have the length of 1. So this is 1 here, and this here is also 1. And now with that in mind, what we're doing when we rotate the bases, right, that we want to represent our spin in, is essentially taking and rotating it by some degree, alpha, alpha degrees, and again, alpha degrees, right? And we want to figure out, is, is there a way to take our alpha degrees and essentially find a way to represent what we have right here with that information, right? And that's, again, in relation to our initial, you know, whatever our standard uh, basis uh, direction would have been. Now, before we do that, let's go back a little bit and uh, define a couple of really basic uh, trigonometric uh, kind of terms. And if you're already familiar with geometry and right triangles and sine, cosine, and tangent, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, feel free to skip over this part. This is just to make sure we're on the same page and using the same uh, kind of terms and phrases to refer to the different parts. And so simply put, if you have a right triangle right here, you have an angle theta, you have an opposite side, you have an adjacent side, you have a hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse being the longest side, opposite being the opposite of your angle, and adjacent being, you know, the side that's adjacent to your angle that is not opposite of your right angle right here. And again, your opposite and adjacent can vary depending on which angle, this one or this one, that you end up choosing. Um, in this case, we're just going to go with this angle just because uh, it happens to be right there. Now, we want to talk about the relationship between the sides of our triangle. And I'm going through this rather quickly. Um, we want to talk about the relationship between them. We end up with sine, right? Sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. And what we'll be focusing on today it would just be sine of theta and cosine of theta. And now, sine of theta, right, um, is essentially described as being the ratio between the length of your opposite side and your hypotenuse. And cosine, on the other hand, is equal to the ratio between your adjacent side and your hypotenuse. And the reason why people find these relationships so special is the fact that these, right, are the very, essentially, uh, ratios between these sides that we have right here remains true regardless of the size of the triangle. As long as that angle remains the same, the ratio between them remains the same as well. And this becomes quite useful, and I will describe that in a little bit. So let me go back and redraw that diagram that we had earlier, right? So we have some uh, 
Cartesian coordinate plane, we give us our direction names, and then we have our initial bases, right? Initial bases, vectors, and then we have our new ones, each with length one. And now we have taken our bases vectors and rotated it by some degree alpha, right? Alpha. And we, just from a purely mathematical perspective, before we even apply it to the measurement of spin direction, let's make sure we know how to represent this right here, right? We want to figure out a way to represent our green vectors in a way that makes sense for our blue vectors, in a way such that um, if we were to use our blue vectors and the directions as our frame of references, we are able to represent them accordingly. And in order to do so, actually what we need to find are the, the x and y lengths and says, uh, vectors uh, that sum up, right? Because we're talking about this and this, that sum up to be our green vectors. Um, and then we'll write it um, in accordance to that. Now, first things first, actually, there's something quite curious that we can do here, which is if we draw a line here, we end up with what is quite clearly a right triangle. And furthermore, as you already know, we know that this right here is our angle alpha. Now, going on from there, we also know that the length here is 1, as we established earlier. And so with this newfound information, there's a couple of relationships that we can establish. One, uh, let's call this, oops, we'll call this our x temporarily, and we'll temporarily call this our y, right? And so what we know is that sine of your alpha degrees, right, is equal to x over your hypotenuse 1. I mean, anything divided by 1, which is identity, is equal to x, right? Is equal to itself, meaning that this right here should be equal to sine of alpha, right? And similarly, what we have here is if we take cosine of alpha, cosine of a, depending on, you know, precisely how you're reading this right here, um, we end up having y over our hypotenuse because y is adjacent to our angle right here. And this simplifies down to be y. And so we end up having, again, y is equal to cosine of alpha. All right, you might say that's that's interesting. You can represent it in such a way such that, you know, it looks kind of like this. But what's so special about it? Why bother? Right? Because keep in mind that these are essentially our unit vectors. If we want to be able to represent this blue vector, I'm sorry, this green vector right here, using our initial unit vectors, what we end up having is perhaps a vector pairing um, that looks something along the lines of sine. Oops, let me use the right color here. Right? Nope, not the right color. Sine alpha, cosine alpha, right? And that is the essentially representing our vector in this case uh, using our initial basis, relative to your initial basis. And we can follow the same kind of procedure with what we have down here. Again, this right here is alpha, right? And given our y direction here um, is uh, opposite of our angle, then we end up having as our y direction, this is y, this is x, right? Um, our y direction is being sine of alpha, right? And this being our cosine alpha, just following the same uh, kind of uh, the thought process that we had here. And keep in mind that thought process was that we wanted to talk about looking at this angle right here and how it relates to the sides relative to the angles. Now there's something interesting quite uh, to keep in mind here, which is that this uh, side right here, our y, right, y right here in this case is below the x-axis, meaning that we're going to be talking about a negative sine alpha in this case. And to simply put, to very uh, easily break it down, um, what we're essentially saying is that if you want to take a basis, right, that looks like this, and you want to, or a set of vectors, and you want to rotate it such that its result is rotated your bases that we're talking about uh, is rotated by a degrees. What ends up happening um, is that we end up with uh, something that looks a little bit um, like. Let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. Right here, uh, we have cosine of alpha. Right, cosine of alpha. Negative sine of alpha. And then we have sine of alpha, 
cosine of alpha. Right? And keep in mind, this is uh, when we are rotating. Um, so in this case, our initial right, was considered up and down. So our initial would have been uh, an up and down kind of basis. Right? And so that would have been 0, negative 1, and 1, 0. Right? So this is our initial. And after a rotation of a degrees, this is where we came uh, and ended up. Now, before we go into uh, to this a little bit further, let's talk about what this means when applied to qubits, when applied to spin. Um, simply put, when we do measure the bases of something quite clearly, or I'm sorry, when we do measure the spin of something um, quite clearly, we aren't measuring in right angles. When we measure spin, we're actually looking at things in the up and down direction. Right, so what does that mean, right? Now, there's several ways to do, approach this kind of a question of applications, right? And what this uh, essentially means uh, in terms of you know, quantum physics. Um, the first way to do so, actually, is let's consider a rotation, rotation of the basis of the bases. Right, we're talking about the bases here. We're not talking about the spin direction of the bases by 90 degrees, right? And following the same formula that we had before, the resultant that we get is cosine of 90, right? And the negative sign of 90, right? And then we get sine of 90, and then cosine of 90. All right, and now with that in mind, let's consider what this means, right? So let's take this uh, set that we have right here and let's write it out. All right, so this becomes cosine of 90, right? It is essentially written out as being equal to zero and sine of 90, right? Or I apologize, negative sine of 90 is negative one. Again, we have sine of 90, uh, that is equal to 1, and cosine of 90, that is equal to 0. Now, what's interesting is, remember when we said what our initial uh, set of bases essentially was? And that is, in fact, precisely what we have right here. This is our initial, right, that I'm writing right now. And after a 90 degree rotation of our bases, this is what we end up with. Right. Um, and as can be previously noted, uh, as a side note, if we were to talk about measuring spin in up and down direction, it is worth noting that 0, negative 1 and 0, positive 1 are indeed the same thing. So if we were to measure spin in up and down direction, uh, that is kind of what it was. I did leave it as a negative uh, just for uh, simplicity's sake. But regardless, right, our initial was 0, positive 1 and 1, uh, positive 1, 0, right? Um, and that is equivalent to 0, negative 1 and 1, uh, 0, just because you know it's essentially a flip in itself and uh regardless so what we have here actually is something quite curious because when we were changing the spaces by 90 degrees it's essentially giving us getting us back to the same spin direction so another way of writing this another way of writing that relationship we established earlier is that if we change so starting with uh, say zero, 1 and 1 0 right and in this case just note negative and positive 1 in this case are the same um, and this is our initial and if we're rotating it our spin measurement direction right our measurement direction so this is different from the direction of our bases by 90 degrees, or say, let's let's make it generic by theta degrees, right? So if this is our north, this is our south, right? We're taking we're measuring spin um, in this up and down direction, and our spin direction is changing. 
right, north and south, by some degree theta right over here. This is not the same as changing our bases uh, direction because bases, keep in mind, are at 90 degrees relative to each other and our spin direction is at 180 degrees relative to each other. Right? If we're changing our spin measurement direction by theta, then it becomes essentially our new bases can be written as cosine of theta over 2, negative sine theta over 2, right? These are parentheses. And then we have sine of theta over 2, right? Because again, as we mentioned before, making and changing your spin direction by uh, 180, right? Measuring up and down and changing that by one up and down uh, by 180 degrees gives us again the spin direction measured in up and down is equivalent to rotating our bases direction change by 90 degrees. And so this is the final relationship that we end up having, right? Let me shrink this down one last time. All right, so simply put, uh, just to briefly summarize what we have here, if we take our spin direction measurement and we rotate it by 180 degrees, again, we're still measuring in the up and down directions, right? And from there, this up and down directions is equivalent right, uh, to having your bases directions, right, this is your bases, being rotated by 90 degrees, right, and so this is where we end up with this really nice kind of relationship right over here, and to make it a little bit neater, let me make sure we have the proper parentheses put in, in this case, right, and so simply put, if we want to uh, essentially change our bases in association with our spin direction, we take theta, the change in our spin direction divided by 2 and apply psi and cosine to in order to determine our bases set. All right, so that is it for today. This is a general kind of look at how to uh, essentially approach the concept behind why uh, this kind of transformation and rotation uh, ends up having a basis that looks like this. Um, uh, again, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to visit the Community uh, Quantum Tech website. I mean, as always, stay curious and keep on learning.